So I'll meet you on the mat. So two blocks if you have them, we're gonna use them a little bit later. Right now we're going to stand in Tadasana. Finding that stable, easy pose. Feet can be, um, have a block between them if you like. Okay, legs, I'm sorry, not feet. And turn the palms forward because if you happen to notice when we were seated, the palms were down on your lap, which means your palms were facing backward. And there's this closing that happens in the shoulder. You might not even notice it, which energetically closes the front of the body, throat, chest, collarbones, even breath. When you turn your palms forward, you'd be surprised how much more spacious your body feels. Okay, from here, I'm gonna turn so you can see, you've got the block between your legs, maybe, you don't have to. You're gonna inhale, bring the arms up, palms face backward, and think about that uh, extension through the spine, like you're doing a tiny little baby back then. And then as you exhale, bend the knees, bring your arms back behind you, let the spine round slightly with your exhale. This is exactly what we were doing earlier. Inhale, lift and reach. Exhale. And just let the arms float as they want to, but I want you to focus more on the spine itself, especially the lower spine. So as you're inhaling, the pelvis is tilting forward and your spine arcs. And as you're exhaling, the pelvis tilts back and your spine rounds. Big inhale, big exhale. Let's do two more. Try not to put your head down below your hips. Okay, inhale last time, exhale. And as we stand, I want you to take your hands, turn them forward, hook your thumbs. Now pull like you're trying to pull your thumbs apart, press through your legs and get longer. See if you can feel another tiny little bit of space around your waist. From there, keep that. Exhale, hands release, palms face forward. Now notice, does your Tadasana feel any different? Mine does. <clears throat> All right, going back to the beginning. So I'll turn again. We're gonna add a little piece here. So inhale, rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. So we've got this movement. Now, what we're going to add is a little balance. So I want you to inhale, rise, and maybe pick up your right knee. Put it down as you exhale. Inhale, rise, maybe pick up your left knee. Exhale. And so we're just moving back and forth, finding a little bit more in this simple, easy movement pattern. And I'm trying not to move super fast so that I can feel and sense my ability to balance here. Last two, inhale, rise up. Exhale, inhale, rise up. Exhale, come to stand. Again, hook your thumbs. Pull like you're trying to pull your thumbs apart. Lift and get longer. Feel the length in your side body. And then exhale, palms facing forward. Ah, checking in. Adding on. Boy, my, my mat wants to really move around today. Okay, so inhale, rise, same focus. See how much bigger it starts to feel. Exhale. Inhale, knee comes up, you're gonna keep it there. And as we exhale, you're gonna step back into a high lunge. A couple weeks back, we call, I call this the power lunge. Inhale, rise on that same leg. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Next time we're gonna stay in the lunge. Exhale, now hold here and lift your arms up. Feel that extension. Can you hook your thumbs here? Pull the thumbs as you're lifting up. Feel the spaciousness in your front body. Specifically through the back leg, hip flexor, belly. 
area. As you exhale, release the hands, come back, standing neutral, palms forward. Inhale, rise up, lift. Exhale, this time knee comes up, other leg. Inhale, lift. And we're gonna step back into that high power lunge. Inhale, lift. Exhale, power lunge. Inhale, lift. Exhale, power lunge. Next time we stay in that lunge, whoop, good thing I have the wall today. Now stay here and lift. And then hook your thumbs. Pull your thumbs apart as you lift in spacious opening. Big breath. And then as you exhale, release the hands. Come back to Tadasana. Pause. I'm hearing someone's phone. Whose phone am I listening to? I don't know. I don't want to mute myself. <laughs> okay. You should feel pretty warmed up. Stand sideways on your mat. I want your feet on a diagonal so that your knees bend and your knees hang out over your ankles. Your knees are following the same direction as your toes. So every time I've done this, I've done this, I've been a, in this profession for a long, long time. I've always had to adjust my feet, always, always. So just check in. And then think about that exhale through the belly as you descend, okay? Now you can see that my heels are a little bit closer to my body than I want them. So I need to step a little wider when I go through that. So always remember, if we're in this wide stance, you don't want to release and let your tailbone go back because then you're in that back bend and there's no stability. So core body engage, tailbone descends, and you move through it that way. Super important. And while we're here, touch your opposite elbows. Nothing hard. And then you're going to open the arms, reach up and touch the thumbs. Come back, elbows, touch the elbows and then open and reach the thumb and down. And so find your range here, find what feels good. Everybody's a little bit different. We're trying to open up the inner and work the outer legs now, a little different than the first round. Good, and reach and touch and crisscross and reach and land and crisscross. We're gonna do one more. Lift up, land, crisscross. This time when you stand, just stay standing, grab your thumbs, keep your legs nice and active, and you're just gonna lean over to one side. Wide-legged crescent pose. Keep pulling the fingers apart, the thumbs apart to keep your arms engaged. So I don't want your elbows bent. Keep reaching. Good, inhale up and go the other way. Now, if that just feels too hard, just drop one arm. Okay, super simple. Good, inhale, come to center, and then exhale, release. Good, bring your feet together. Stand, pause. We're gonna take a big deep breath, standing at the top of your mat. Inhale, palms to the wall behind you. Think spinal extension. Exhale, fold all the way to the floor now. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold all the way down. Find downward facing dog. Feel and sense into your dog pose. Let it be what you want it to be. Bent knees, not bent knees. Pedaling, not pedaling. And then find stillness. Find stillness. Feel and sense what's present in the body. Does the body have any information for you that you need to notice? Um, your next inhale, come forward to your first plank pose. Now this is where I want you to really pay attention to what we were doing in the beginning. So the exhale pulls the belly in and then engages the legs. Imagine you have the block between your legs. So all of that is happening while you're hanging out in plank pose. Take a breath. 
and then exhale, just let your knees rest on the floor and take your hands off your mat so that they're super wide apart. And ideally your fingers are pointing more forward than outward. All right, we've got five push-ups here. Ready? Down and up. What, they're saying push-ups already? Three, wide armed, much more chest involvement, much more back involvement than closed arms. Good, that was five. Hands back on the mat, find downward facing dog again. Take a walk, hop or skip to the front of your mat. <clears throat> Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold all the way down. And then inhale, stand, rise, palms together. Exhale, hands at the heart, pause. <clears throat> I'm gonna stay facing you because I want you to see what I'm gonna do with my body. But the first round, we lifted the knee and stepped back, right? You remember that? This time, we're gonna step across. So we call this a curtsy action. So let's start with just that. Your arms can be open. You're gonna step back and crisscross, and then you're gonna to touch your knee. Okay, so that's all we're doing. And then come up to stand. Other side, crisscross, touch your knee. Now think about, you know, I, I've never curtsied really, but I've seen it done enough times. So what would you do? You would step back and you might bend your back knee and up. And that's an if, right? That's an if. Okay, so straight leg is easier, bent back leg is a little harder. And then the next level down is touch your foot. Okay, so we're gonna go back and forth. And what I want you to do is find your rhythm. Find your rhythm. So up and down, eyes forward, spine long, crisscross, touch the floor or your foot or your knee. And you can see I'm using the length of my mat, moving from one side to the other. And if we were moving a little bit faster, which we're not gonna to do today, we could hop through it, making it a little bit more like a higher level intensity plyometric. But right now, no. Let's do three more. Heart rate should be coming up a little, right? We're using the largest muscles of the body. One more each leg. And then we pause. Right here, pause. Woo! Are you awake? Yes, I hope. All right, take the legs wide on your mat again, going back to that squat. Going back to that squat. And again, finding your adjustment. What do you need? So the hands are gonna to come to the head. I just want you to touch your fingertips. The elbows are gonna be open. From here, we're gonna laterally bend to one side. You may or may not get to it depending on how flexible and how short or long you are here. Inhale, come up. Take your opposite hand and touch your knee. Inhale, come up, close the elbows and round the spine. Inhale, extend, other side. Side bend, up, touch your knee, up, exhale, close. Inhale, side bend, up, touch, up, close, up, Side bend, up, touch. Now your touch might start to end up getting lower as we go, okay? So you don't have to go lower, but you might notice you can just easily because your body's getting used to what you're doing. Exhale, pull the belly in every time your elbows touch each other. Reach up. And this is preparing you for the next little segment. Okay, so I don't care how high or low you go, just know that we're warming up. We're still in warm up phase. Let's do one more other side. Side bending, touching, and then closing. 
Good, come to center. Palms forward, mountain pose. Take a moment. Did you notice that when you first started that series, that little movement we just did, it felt a little tight. And as you kept going, it got a little easier and a little easier, yeah? That's really common. We were doing a bunch of varied movements. All right, so now let's hold our weights. If you're using weights, please grab them. And this first series, if you can, you're gonna hold your, both your weights in one hand. If you don't, if you can't do that because it's too awkward, one hand has uh, each weight in it, okay? We're gonna go back to the beginning. So hands by your side, and I happen to have my weights in my right hand. I'm gonna ask you to move your right foot first. So weight is in your right hand. Same leg that moves is the weight in the hand, okay? Notice how it wants to pull you off to the side. And even with this little tiny, like awareness, your core body turned on. Otherwise it would fall over to the side. Okay, so let's picking up the right knee. You can use your left hand as an extending outward or maybe on a wall or a chair. And as you step back into that high lunge, I want you to curl your arm so your hand is by your shoulder. As you step forward, it releases. And as you step back, it curls. And now if your balance is really wonky and you don't have anything to stand close by to hold, you could go tap, right? Curl, knee up. Find your, your smooth, graceful action, right? Easy. One more and we stay back there and stay here. Now, you've got an option. Your front knee is gonna stay still. You can bend your back knee and lower your hand and then come back up or you can keep the back leg straight and lower the hand and come back up. I don't care what you do. If you're able to do the knee lunge, obviously it's a little bit more work. Down and up. Shoulders are square. Core body is engaged. Eyes are forward. Head is stacked directly over the so shoulders. And we're working this one arm just a little harder than what we would normally lift. Work it. One more time. And then bring yourself forward and stand. Same thing, change sides. So you're holding the weight in one hand. And I forgot to tell you, I'm sorry, if you were holding the weights in each hand, both arms would have been working at the same time. Alrighty, so left knee lifts. Balance, either weight in all, all the weight in your left hand or one in each hand. As you step back, curl. As you stand forward, release. Step back, curl. Now you're gonna find that one side felt pretty easy and the other side, not so much. And that's because we're always a little bit more coordinated and stronger on one side. It's just our natural part of being human. Last time we stay here, remember your options, lower the knee, lower the hand, straighten the leg, curl the hand, or just leave the leg still, or maybe just bend it a little. Lower and lift, really focusing on that graceful action. Graceful action, okay? Not trying to rush, using yogic principles of slowing down, mindfulness, focus. And then next time when you come up, step and pause. Weights in each hand. Just stand for a moment. Take a moment for Tadasana. All right, legs wide apart, going back to the wide lunge or wide squat. Knees open. 
Find your stance. And then while we're in this position, I want you to crisscross your arms, open, and then push your arms up over your head. So elbows, crisscross, open, push up. And then check in with your knees. Are they hanging out over your ankles while you're down here? Or are they falling inward? If they're falling inward, that means your feet are too wide apart. Bring them closer together. In. And then see, can you drive the tailbone toward the floor and deepen your squat? The knees move open and the tailbone moves down. And reach down, crisscross, open, reach down, crisscross, open. We'll do one more. Down, crisscross, open, reach. Bring your weights to your chest, bring your feet together. Take a moment here in mountain pose. All right, we're gonna go back. <clears throat> we're gonna go back to that curtsy squat. You can choose to hold your weights or not. All right, because you're gonna have your arms open. This can feel hard. So decide. We're gonna take the curtsy and touch. Knee, shin, foot, floor. Back up, touch, back up, touch, back up. So your choice, use the weights or not. Take a wide stance and crisscross so you're traveling across the mat a little bit using a lot more internal and external parts of the body. Woo. Anybody breathing? <laughs> Shoulders down your back. Don't make it go in your neck. We're gonna do one more on each side and then we're gonna pause and rest. Roll the shoulders, take a breath. Set your weights down. New series, wide stance, warrior two. Little variation I want you to pay attention to. Your back leg is gonna be square, not turned in, okay? Square, and then your front leg is pointing to the short edge of your mat. So you can bend your knee. So the square foot is important for what we're gonna do. Find your stance and then arms open. Breathe. <sighs> Feels so much easier without the weights in your hands. Draw the belly in as you exhale, tailbone to the floor. We're gonna take this opposite hand. We're gonna reach across and twist to touch the floor right next to your front foot. Your back hand's reaching back behind you. Inhale, come up. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, come up. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Good, stay up, fingers to the head. Stay in your stance, oblique crunch, to the knee and touch and up and touch and up. Good. And you can even take it back slightly if it feels good in your body. Down, back. Fingers are just lightly touching your head. Elbows stay wide open. Let's do one more. Arms open. Second, third movement here. Two arms touch the Floor right along the front foot. Inhale, come up. Exhale, touch. Inhale, come up. Can you touch easily? I noticed I had to adjust my front foot a little when I'm asking for two hands down. Okay, one more time, we're gonna stay. Right here, fingers reach forward, lift and off of that back leg. Ankle to the sky. Strong front leg, fingertips lightly on the floor, spine long. Now maybe the right hand can come to the heart. You have your right leg back behind you, it's your right hand and vice versa, obviously. 
Maybe the hand can come up to the sky. Breathe. And if you're very adventurous, maybe the left hand comes to the heart. Woo! Fingers back to the floor. Reach back for your warrior two and come to standing. Bring your feet together and bring your feet all the way in and stand in mountain pose. It's a lot going on in that last little series. So check in with yourself. <clears throat> all right, let's see if we can get to the other side. <clears throat> so wide legs again, same thing, pointing the other foot. Knee over ankle, open arms for warrior two. First round, opposite hand reaches to the inside of your front foot, back hands reaching behind you. Inhale, come up. Good, exhale, reach. Legs are stationary here, so make sure you're feeling pretty stable. The lower down you are in your warrior, usually the <clears throat> more range of motion you have in your hips, that's it. Okay, last one, we stay standing. Hands come to the head, elbows down to the knee and back up and down to the knee. And can you touch on this side? So sometimes you can touch on one side and not the other side. And then maybe you're gonna go back slightly, kind of make it a little rocking motion. Back leg is strong, front leg is steady. One more. Arms extending. Take a breath. Two arms free in the front foot now. And then back up you come. Two arms frame and up. Two arms frame, trying to get away from my table and up. This time stay, reach your fingers, push into your standing leg and shift your weight up off your back leg so it's lifted. Press through your standing leg, lengthen through your spine. Keep your back leg lifted. Maybe left hand to left to chest if your left leg is up. Maybe left hand to sky. And then of course, if you feel like you really want to, right hand off the floor all together. Now steady on the side. <laughs> I hope you're smiling. Fingers back to the floor. From here, release your front knee and step back into downward facing dog pose. And take the moment. Downward facing dog. <clears throat> Come forward to plank. Remember what we're focusing on here. Belly up. Glutes are active. Legs are active. Your hips are not higher or lower, okay? Knees on the floor, wide hands. Second round, wide push-ups, five of them. Down and up and down. Elbows move outward away from the body. These are very different than yogic push-ups. Four, one more time, five, and rest back. So just come back off of your hands for a moment. Pump your fingers a little bit. Let me check the time. See where we are. Okay. Wanted to play with these planks just for a moment before we Get down on the floor, and this is where the blocks come in. So I want you to take your blocks, and we're gonna put our hands on them like we're on the floor, okay? Now I'm gonna preface this with, if you have the spongy blocks, you might wanna wrap your fingers around the top so that you've got more weight in the finger pad part of your hand, not in the thumb part, because there's give, right? And then let's find plank. Now in this case, you might be able to keep your head, hips and feet all in one straight line, more of a angled plank. Belly lifted. So if I let go of my belly, I kind of look like this motion. So belly up 
And if you go too high, you take everything away. So feel what this feels like here. Is it easier? Feels different. Keep your legs engaged, keep your belly engaged, keep your awareness what's happening now. One more breath. And then exhale, knees down. Now, <laughs> this is kind of fun. Leave your blocks where they are. I'm gonna move mine forward just a little bit because I know what I'm doing. And I'm gonna turn you one, I want you to turn around so that your toes are on your blocks. What? Toes are on your blocks. Check to make sure they're sort of in the middle. Hands under the shoulders, fingers wide. And when you feel ready, come up into plank here. <laughs> so your feet are higher. Your arms are strong. Your belly's active. Your legs are active. Notice how this one feels. Woo-wee. Anybody notice how this is harder? Yes? Of course it is. Take three more breaths here. Use your belly. Don't let yourself sink to the floor. After your third exhale, knees down. All right. Lucky for you, we're running out of time because I had a whole series planned for you around that. Maybe we'll see it next week. Move the blacks after the, out of the way and come to sitting. You're gonna sit in a zigzag action. Ankles are on the floor. This back leg is sitting wherever it wants to be. And you're gonna to turn to face the side of the mat that you're leaning on, okay? So my back leg is my right leg, I'm leaning to my left. And I just want you to feel what it feels like to rotate around and take a moment here. It should feel good, actually. And now take your hands wide apart like we were doing before. I'm gonna be up on my fingers, but you can be down on your hands. And we're gonna lower the torso down and up. Now there's not a lot of weight in your arms, which is why I'm on my fingers, because it just feels better to me to do it that way. And lower. Now, the next time you lower, I want you to lift this back leg off the floor and lower it when you come up, like a seesaw. Okay, down and up. And again, if you've got your hands on the floor, you can put your hands wherever it makes sense for you. I've got my hands wide and fingers only. Let's do one more and release. Now stay on this side and tuck your foot into your body and then take your arm and stretch over. So this leg, if you know Vajrasana or Hero's Pose, very close to your body, you're getting a nice stretch in your quad, maybe in your knee and also obviously here. Good. Release, switch your sides. Now that you know it's coming, hands on the opposite side. Feel and sense this rotation first. Maybe make adjustments as you need to. And then take your hands off your mat, wide hands, and just do a down and up motion three or four times just to get this in your body. Down and up. Elbows move away from the body, outward to the side, I'm trying to target different muscles here. And then as you come down the next time, back leg lifts up and then lowers down. Lifts and lowers. Kind of a fun little movement. And down, you might notice that one arm is working a little harder when that leg comes up and down. There's a reason for that. One more time, land, and then take your hand and kind of tuck your foot into your bottom so your toes are pointing behind you, and then bring your arm up over your head. Big stretch here in the lateral part of the body. Remember, not a bent arm. Keep lengthening, keep lengthening as much as you can. Breathing. And then go ahead and release. Bring your legs out in front of you. Give them a little shake out. So I went to my left first. That was my first side. So I'm going to bend that leg. 
The other leg is gonna be straight out on an angle. I wanna make sure you have room behind you. So for me, I need to move forward a little, otherwise I'm gonna run into this wall. <clears throat> and so we're gonna do a little rotation back and forth. So fingers start on the floor, lifting up nice and tall. Take your opposite arm and reach to this long leg foot. And then from here, rotate around and reach to the wall behind you. Rotate to the foot and then rotate to the wall behind you. Now the next time we go back, you can plant your back hand flat and reach back and lift your hips. Lower down, rotate, grab your foot. Land your back hand, reach back and lift your hips. And down, it's a fun little motion. It has a lot of benefits for the flexors, the hip flexors, lower back glutes, core, of course, the one arm you're resting on. And one more time, we're gonna hang out on each side here. So hang out back here, push through your standing shin, the one that you got on the floor, push the pelvis up more, reach back further. See how much more open you can feel. On your next exhale, lower the hips, Reach to your opposite foot and then hang out here. Noticing what you're noticing here. On your next inhale, let go and rise up. And then switch your legs. Fingers on the floor, sit up nice and tall. And then let's crisscross over. See if you can get near this foot. What's it feel like on this side? Come around and reach to the wall behind you. Notice how your hip wants to come off the floor. Reach. You know what's coming now, so just kind of get your body ready. And the next time you stand, put that hand down and reach and lift. And lower and crisscross. And back and lift. One of my favorite moves, my back loves this move. <clears throat> I don't know if your back does. Reach and back. And then the next time we come back on our hand, I want you to stay there. So find the shin that you're leaning on and push into it to open the body more. Fingers are wide and into the floor. Back arms reaching far behind you. One arm balance actually. Exhale, release down. And now find your foot and hang out there. One more breath. And then come all the way up to sitting. Nice. Okay, let's go to the blocks here. We just need one. You're gonna lie down on the floor. <clears throat> and I want you to take the blocks, either the shortest or the middle height underneath your sacrum. I'm gonna do the short one. Uh, the higher one, it doesn't mean that you're working harder. It just, it really depends on how long your, your trunk is. Mine's real short, so I work better with that. Now bring your left knee towards your chest and slide your right leg down. So now we're, we're still working core, but in a completely different idea of deep, deep stabilizers, primarily the psoas, which is, you guys know by now, hooked from the inner thigh, the inner femur, through the pelvis. That's why you can feel it in this lower abdomen section and connects to all five of your lumbar vertebrae. So this muscle that we're working right now can really have an effect on how straight you stand. From here, I just want you to float your heel just off the floor. And imagine by pressing through the ball of your foot that your leg is getting longer. Pretend you're pressing on a pedal in your car. Now from here, you could take your second hand and maybe pull your knee in more. So as you reach the foot farther off the floor, you can pull your knee closer 
and you might notice that there's some kind of sensation happening. As you inhale, lift your leg so that it's straight up to the sky. And as you exhale, slowly lower it back down, don't touch the floor. Feel and sense this muscle, commonly called the hip flexor, anatomically called the psoas or iliopsoas, working. If you go fast, you try to make this too hard, your quadricep will take over. I don't want that to happen. We're gonna do one more slow lift, one more slow lift, and one more slow lower. Keep drawing the knee closer and closer to your chest. Don't touch the floor, but make the leg feel longer and longer and longer. One more breath. And then exhale, heel to the floor. Feel how far away that floor feels. And then heel pressing down into the floor. Can you get that sensation of heel pushing down? And then let go of your left knee. Let it rest on the floor, foot down. And then slide your right leg up. Pause there for a moment. All right, when you feel ready, right knee comes in. I'm holding it only with one hand initially. Slide the left leg all the way down so the heel touches. And try to imagine your heel getting longer and as you do that, you can draw the knee in a little bit. Now from here, heel floats off the floor like an inch. And then if you like, you can grab the leg with your second hand and start to draw it in more. So just like the first time, press through the pedal through the ball of your foot, reach the leg longer without it touching the floor, and then keep drawing the knee in. And you might want to check with yourself how close you are to the floor because it's very common to let the leg get up high. From here, start to slowly lift the leg straight up. Try to go as slow as you can. I don't know about you, but my leg is shaking. And that's not because my legs are tired. I think it's more to do with I'm addressing the psoas muscle, which in most of us are tight and weak. If you sit a lot, you can pretty much know that yours is tight and weak. And if you have a lumbar curve like I do, called lordosis, you know it's short and weak. And so we're trying to lengthen it and strengthen it all at the same time. If this resonates with you, you're like, oh yes, my body really needs this. I would do this every day. You only need three slow lifts, maybe five, no more. Get close to the floor, but don't touch it. And then reach the leg longer, pull the knee in more. You'll feel that you've got more range now. As you exhale, lower the foot down, touch the heel to the floor and press the heel down. Nice inhale, nice exhale. And then slowly let go of your right leg, let the foot rest on the floor and slide the left leg back up. Take a moment here before we move the block. So what I don't want you to do is all of a sudden start doing things that are gonna contract this area and make it, make it go into that shortened condition again. So lift your hips, slide the block out from underneath you, and then walk your feet wider apart. Arms are open in a T or in cactus or even over your head. You're gonna just let your knees float to the right. Now I want you to stay here on purpose so that we don't hyper contract this area again. If you like, right foot can hook left leg. Breathing, left shoulder down. Focus your awareness and breath around the left inner groin, left lower back and waist and belly. This is where that psoas area likes to live in effect. As you, <clears throat> excuse me, as you take the next inhale, unhook your foot and then switch over to the other side. So rotating your legs over to the left, keeping your right shoulder down. 
Let your right hip come up, feel what's going on in your right inner leg, and then maybe hook your foot if you like. Nice deep breath. Good, come back to center. Now keep your feet apart, find neutral in your pelvis, let your knees come together, let them rest. <clears throat> find your thumbs like we did in the very beginning, bring your arms over your head and try to pull your thumbs apart. Palms should be facing the ceiling. You might notice your shoulders wanna roll back on your body, that's really great. Take a breath here. And now just change the hook of your thumbs and do the same thing. You don't have to pull hard in order to get the action. On your next exhale, release your hands, bring them down to your hip crease. Take your heel of your hand and push into your leg as you, like you're trying to push your leg out of your hip socket. Let your lower back release and feel and breathe into anything you're noticing. A little bit of a self massage your self adjustment. And then let everything release. Good. Now, if you feel like it would be nice for you to do, bring your knees up to your chest, give them a little hug. Maybe wrap your arms, grab a hold of your wrists or your fingers. You could do that over your shins or under your thighs. Taking a breath, really give it a nice little hug, feeling the release anywhere in the back body. Take one more breath. And then letting your feet come to the floor, finding your way to Shavasana now. So if you don't have any issues, you could just let your legs come down a little wider apart. Hands come apart, wider apart, palms open, legs kind of relaxed. Of course, please cover yourself up or use bolsters or blocks or blankets underneath your body to support you. Once you feel steady and you don't need to move around anymore, take a nice deep breath. Let your exhale soften you to the earth. Feeling again the density of your muscles and your bones and your physical body shape. Taking a moment to just listen to anything that your body has to share with you before you let all that go. You find your way into complete rest.
Take a deeper breath. And allow that deeper breath to awaken you from the inside out. As you feel ready, gently start to stretch your fingers and your toes, <clears throat> your arms and your legs. Until you feel ready to bend your knees. Rolling to your right side. Make your way up to sitting. Allow the hands to come together. Holding gratitude for our time together this morning in community with this gift we call yoga. May our light always shine brightly and may we always see the light in each other. Namaste.